All right, let's get started with unit eight. This is section 8.1. I can solve percent problems. So we'll write the word percent right here. And the first thing we're gonna talk about in the warm up is what does the word percent mean? Well, the word percent is kind of like per century. A century is 100 years. So the word percent means per 100. So we're always comparing things to 100. Nice, easy num number to compare to. And in the second part of the warm up, it says change each percent to a decimal. So percents have the percent sign at the very end of them, but we can have a decimal equivalent for them. So every number has a decimal on it. So we're going to put the decimal right there. That's 38.0 if we wanted to think of it that way. To change from a decimal to a, per, or sorry, excuse me, from a percent to a decimal, we move the decimal two places, one, two, so we move it like that. So the decimal equivalent of this is 0.38. So 38% is 0.38. We're going to do the same thing with 26, or sorry, 25.6. We're going to go one, two, move it like that. So we get 0.256. We'll circle that. That's the decimal equivalent. It gets a little interesting here. The decimal's right there. Now, a lot of people just say, oh, I'm going to move it over once, and then it's 0.7. It's not. We need to move it over one, two places, and then we'd fill in with a zero right here. So 7% is 0.07 as a decimal. And then we're going to move this one over. This is 1.59%. So we're going to go one, two, put the decimal right there. So this is 0 0.0159 as a decimal. So these are each percents, but they have a decimal equivalent. And now we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to take each one of these decimal numbers and write down their percent equivalent. So we're going to move this over two places, one, two. Notice that on percent to decimal, we move it two places to the left. And on decimal to percent, we move it two places to the right. So when we go from percent to decimal, it gets smaller, two places smaller. And when we go from decimal to percent, it gets two places bigger. So this is 12%, always the percent sign on the end. We're going to move this over two places, one, two. So that's going to make this 53.9%. And then move this over, one, two. So that's going to be 5%, kind of like the equivalent of what we did up there with 7%. And then we're going to move over one, two. So we end up with 2.99. And when we move that decimal over two places, we put that percent sign on the end to represent that. Now, when we talk about solving percent problems, like we do in the I can statement up there, there are actually three main types of percent problems. And every single one of them can be solved using an equation, which is the approach that we're going to take, solving using an equation. Now, the cool thing about this is we can set them up the same way every single time. And once it's set up, we just use our equation solving skills that we've worked on learning to solve to find the missing piece. So here's the format or a format that can be used for every single percent problem. It's blank is blank percent of blank. Now, one of these blanks, the middle one right here, represents a percent. There's only one percent in these problems. And the other two represent, so the other two uh, blanks represent numbers. OK, so all we have to do is make sure that we get things in the right place and we'll be able to solve this. Now, a couple of things that we want to keep in mind. Percents will have a percent symbol right behind them, always goes behind. And they should always be written as a decimal. Let's write the word decimal right here. We write them as a decimal if we're using them in an equation and when we're enter the, entering them into a calculator. So let's write the word calculator right here. OK. Now, the second thing is the word is usually means, and we've talked about this before, it usually means equal, and the word of usually means multiply. So let's look at some examples and see how this works. So 2 times 4, so if I did 2 times 4 is, that would equal 8. All right, so the word is means equal, and 3 fourths of 12 is 9. So 3 fourths of 12 is or equals 9. And if I were to think of this as a fraction right here, we can do some cross cancellation. That would cancel to be a one, that would cancel to be a three. So I have three times three equals nine, and there we go. So let's keep those things in mind. Again, the percent is always gonna have a percent symbol behind it, and we're gonna uh, put that in a decimal equivalent, the decimal form like we talked about up above. The word of means multiply, and the word is usually means equal. So let's take a look at this and see if we can solve these using equations. And remember, we're going to round our answers to the nearest hundredth if we need to. Sometimes we will, sometimes we won't. So we're going to go ahead and take this right here, and we're going to uh, translate this into an equation. It says, what is 14% of 82? Well, we don't know what this number is, so let's use an x to represent it. x is, or x equals, 14%. Now remember, we're going to move this over two decimal places. So 1, 2, so this is going to be 0.14. 
of means multiply, so 0.14 times 82, and that's what we'll type into our calculator. So I've got the calculator up here, and we're just going to go ahead and type in 0.14 times 82. So 0.14 times 82, and we could use parentheses if we wanted to. That would be totally okay to do the implied multiplication. Always a good idea to make sure that what we type into the calculator is exactly what's on our paper. It looks like it is. So we're in good shape there. We're going to write down 11.48. So 11.48. So 11.48 is 14% of 82. Let's do the next one. 18 is, so 18 equals 66%. So let's move that over two places. So this is going to be 0.66 of, we don't know what, what we're multiplying by, so we're going to do of what number? Uh, we don't know that number, so we're going to multiply by x. Now, we can leave the parentheses on there. That's totally okay. If you wanted to write it just as 0.66 times x, that would be fine. Don't need the parentheses on there. But we are going to solve this using our equation solving technique. So we're going to divide by 0.66. Divide by 0.66 on both sides. And we'll get x equals, and then let's figure out what this is here. So we're going to type in 18 divided by 0.66. Again, make sure that what's on our calculator is what we mean there, what was on our paper. So we end up with 27.272727. Uh, now, we are going to need to round this to the nearest hundredth, so let's take a look here. 27.27, uh, two decimal places. This is either going to be a 27 or a 28. So it's going to be 0 0.27 or 0 0.28. We look at this third decimal place to figure that out. That's less than 5, so we're going to leave that 2727. So this is 27.27. .27. And we're going to go ahead and circle that. And then let's take a look at this one. Um, on this problem right here, it says 22 is what percent of 48? So 22 is, that means equals, remember, what percent? We don't know what the percent is, so let's use a P to represent that. The P will remind us that we're looking for a percent when we're done. The X's remind us that we're just looking for a plain old number. If you wanted to use an N for that variable, that would be totally okay and then of 48. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by 48. Again, like we said before, if you wanted to do um, a dot for multiplication, that would be fine. If you wanted to put the 48 in front of the P, that would be okay. I kind of like this because it's in the order that the, the sentence was written, and the implied multiplication is there with the parentheses. So let's divide both sides by 48 to get that P all by itself. Now you'll notice there's an asterisk on here, and you'll see why. So we get P equals I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to write down 22 divided by 48. And looks like I've got it in there the right way. Hit enter. We get 0.4583333. Now, I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So 0.4583333. Now, you might be thinking, hey, didn't you say we have to round to the nearest hundredth? Why don't we just look at this and round this to either 45 or 46? Well, remember, this is why there's an asterisk on here. This is a percent. We don't leave it as a decimal. We want to answer as a percent. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move this over two places. So this is going to be 45.83333%. And then we want to choose the best way to write that. Again, rounding to the nearest hundredth. So this is either going to be 83 or 84. That 3 is not enough to bump it up. So the answer on this one is 45.83%. Whoops, let me get that out of there so it looks right. All right, so that's how we do those problems. And let's take a look down here. Um, we want to look at these examples in number two um, and take a look at them and see if you notice anything different about these. So we had the wording that we did on these three. Not too bad at all. Let's take a look at these. This says 20% of 82 is what number? 2.5% of what number is 10? And what percent of 8 is 3? So they're basically in a little bit of a different order. So we normally had what is, 18 is, 22 is. This is kind of in, the, in a backwards order here. But the cool thing about this equation technique, it doesn't matter what order they're in. We're still going to use our same techniques to solve those equations. So the numbers and operations might be in a different order, but the techniques are just the same. We're going to do it exactly the same regardless of the way that's worded there. So as long as we're careful, we're going to get the right answer. So we're going to do 20%. Mm, remember, that's got to be a decimal. So we're going to do 0 0.20. I kind of like leaving it that way. We could get away with just 0 0.2. That would be fine. Of, remember, means multiply. So we're going to multiply by 82. Is means equal. And we don't know what the number that it equals is, so we're going to put an x right here. So is equal to x. Again, any variable would do. 
we kind of choose the P for percent and we'll use an X for the, the plain old numbers. So we'll grab the calculator. I'm going to clear this off. 0 0.2 times 82. 0.2 times 82 and we end up with 16.4. So the answer on this one is 16.4. So 20% of 82 is 16.4. Next one, 2.5%. Again, notice the percent. We're going to need to move this over one, two places. So this is going to be 0 0.025. That's the decimal equivalent of, we don't know what the number is, but remember it's a number, so we're going to use a variable like x is equals 10. So now we're going to solve this equation for x. All we need to do is just divide both sides by 0.025. 0 0.025, and luckily we have our calculator with us because that would not be fun to do by hand. So we're going to do 10 divided by 0 0.025. Make sure that the calculator looks right, that it agrees with what we have on our paper. We're going to hit enter, and the answer on this one is 400. So 2.5% of 400 is 10. All right, last problem here. What percent of 8 is 3? So what percent? Well, that's asking, we don't know what the percent is. So let's use a P for that. Of 8... So of means multiplication, so we're going to times that by 8, is 3, so equals 3. So we'll grab this equation right here, and we'll try and solve that. We want to get the P all by itself. We're going to divide both sides by 8. Those are going to cancel. You can grab your calculator for this, or you might recognize that as one of those common rational numbers that we talked about earlier in the year, 3 eighths. You might be able to change that into a decimal without using a calculator. So let's go ahead and grab this. Uh, let's see, I'm going to clear this off. I'm going to do 3 divided by 8, and we're going to hit enter, 0.375. So 0.375. But remember, that P stands for percent. We're going to go 1, 2, so this is 37.5%, and there's the answer. So that's a good introduction to how to do um, problems involving percents. Your assignment today is going to be very similar to this, so go ahead and circle how you feel right now on the self-assessment, and good luck on the assignment.